Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. I recently posted a video about this Henry vacuum cleaner. It has a high switch on it that gives an extra boost to the motor whenever it's sucking. This one's a HVR200A. And I'm gonna fix that now, I think. But fixing it involves bypassing the wiring and the controller so that it just gets high revs or high electricity the whole time. Meanwhile, over here, I have this Henry Extra, which is mounted on a Charles base. This one's a HVX200-11. So a similar unit, this one doesn't have the high-low, it just has on and off and an indicator light. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this unit off and put it on the Henry, on the red Henry base, and sell this. I don't need two, in fact three Henrys. And then what I'll do is, having modified this one, I'll put it onto the Charles base, or maybe it's James. I think it's Charles, it doesn't say. And that will mean that I'll have a vacuum cleaner that I can use in the workshop. Which has been modified and doesn't have the high-low switch on it anymore. But works perfectly fine for me. If I had either a light indicator or a blanking plate, I might put that on it and sell it at a later date. But I can't find one in my stores at the moment. So this video will be about me removing the motor controller from this machine. And wiring it to run full the whole time. So let's get to it. First of all, let me say how grateful I am to all the YouTubers who told me what to do. How simple it was to rewire this and we'll give that a go now. But I really appreciate the community that's out there on YouTube. Because a few times now, when I don't know what to do with tumble dryers, washing machines, vacuum cleaners, etc, etc. I'll post a short video describing what happened or what is happening. People come back and say, oh yeah, you just need to do this or that. And then... That'll fix it. Sometimes you get some comments that aren't helpful, but by and large, most people are trying to be helpful, and I think that's really handy. There's seven screws in the base of this, and I've got four done already. So I'll take out the remaining three, and we'll be inside. And this is the last one. Seven screws, all to one side. Let's lift off this piece. This is just a cover on top. Then we lift off the carousel, which holds the cable. Set that aside. Then in here, you have to snap off this cover. This is a tab on each side. Snap that off. see the controls in here. There's the high-low switch with the indicator light. That's what we want to bypass. So I'm just pulling up all the way around. This piece slides off. Then we get in here to the motor. So I've got live and neutral over here coming in from the contacts on that ring. Going to the switch, the on off switch. And then I've got the live and neutral to the motor here. And as well, I've got this control board here. So first of all, what have we got? I could also replace the control board but that would cost money. And these things are about 20 or 30 euros or pounds online. So I don't really want to spend that money on it. So what do I need to do? It's all quite dirty in here. Let's try and get these switches out by pushing them upwards. There's a tab on each side that just needs to be pushed in and twist them out. We'll have a look at the wiring then once we're in. The caution I have is that I might be reducing or removing a 
noise suppression filter. Although that might be somewhere in here on the motor. There's definitely some little package in there. Okay, so with these removed, really, I just want to have the white cables on one side of the switch and the live and neutral coming in on the other side. So I think this little piece of um, ferrite here, this little core, might be all that's required as a, as a as a noise suppressor. So let's pull these off. Let's get rid of that switch. Pull that off. Pull this off here. And pull this one off here. And let's just put the live and neutral straight onto this switch. And prepare for a cloud of dust. Unroll the cable a little bit off the reel, sit the reel up on top so that the contacts can make contact. Plug it in. It's not switched on yet. We'll check we're in the off position. We'll make a cloud of dust as I say. Turn it on. I'm always a bit dubious of handling switches like this. We're, we're off now. I'm always a bit dubious of handling switches like this where I could just touch my finger across it when I'm trying to switch it off. But, well, we got away with it that time. So then what can I remove out of here? Well, I can remove all of this, I guess. This is all of the high-low switch and control board and the associated wiring. I don't need to put that back in. What I could do is put this switch in instead of a blanking plate, but I'm not sure that there's any need, because if you want to get your finger in there, there'll be nothing behind it. So let's see if I can push this all together again. And just snap it into position. Pull this white cable through a bit. And then this would sit up on top, I think. There's a couple of spaces underneath here for the wires to sit in, so let's get them into position. There's little grooves that they can sit in. I think it just sits in place like this. I don't believe I've forgotten anything. So we'll have to either make a plate, or we could just push, take the cables off and push this switch back in, but that might be confusing. The other option would be to get a light and wire it through to a light with no switch so that you can tell when it's on but in theory you'll know when it's on because it will make noise obviously so let's just leave that aside for now i know this switch works but it just seems to be an issue well the issue could be with the switch of course or it could be with the board but i don't really want to find out i just need a machine that'll suck and if it's sucking on high power well that's good enough for me the issue was that you turn it on to high power and then it would lose power completely which is no good having it running on low power only would be fine but better if it's running on high power. Snap this cover back on. The other thing I could do is just make a little piece of plastic cut out of something else and just have it glued on top there. But as it stands, there's no way, even if you stick your finger right in, there's no way to touch anything live. And I would have to, I'd have to really try there. There's no way to do it. Okay, I don't think we're in correctly yet. Let's try this again. Perhaps we are. Yeah, I think it is sitting down properly. Next step is to put the carousel back on. And remember to keep this little remember to keep this little plastic spacer out. Not plastic spacer, but plastic guide out. Push that on. Handle goes on next. And this guide clips and this guide clips into place here. Now I've noticed that I could just sandwich a piece of something in there. So there is a bit of space. Although for some reason we're not sitting down correctly, so that's not great. And to figure out what's getting in the way. It looks like the motor, something's riding up on the motor there. So let's try this again. What I thought at the start is probably true. If something catching that motor is not sitting down correctly. I think it could be the rubbers on top. Let's check that. Let's 
flip it upside down. Try and take off the bottom. Get the bottom off. And try and take off and rotate this motor until it snaps in place better. No, that's not it yet. It's all come asunder. I don't think we were too far away there, but something's not quite right. So I'm just trying to line up the rubbers on the top of the motor. That's it. It's in position. Then this one goes in like this, but we need to get this filter wrapped around it first, which will be Complicated, I suspect. Then offer it up. It's not too bad. That's better, actually. Now, okay. And then this rubber. And then this piece here. It's on. There's three screws, so it can only go on in one direction, which is this way. Seems a bit better. Carousel again. Then the top cover. And put that plastic piece in place. Now are we ready to screw it back together? And test it one more time. So, so let's get the seven screws back in. If I was going to sell this now, I'm not sure if I'd be comfortable doing that because I've modified it. I think if I was selling it as broken, I'd be happier doing that than selling it as working, but with the new with the parts of the internals removed. I'm a bit cautious about selling electrical devices second hand. If it's something that is broken, you're just selling it as broken, and that's not an issue. But if you're selling it as working, it's not working, or you've changed it some way and then it was to break later, you could find yourself not so much in trouble, but just that somebody might come back to you about it. And I don't really want anybody coming back to me if I sell something second hand. So what I'll do now is, I've got a set of Henry accessories inside and a new filter. I'll put them in it, I'll give it a wipe down and a clean up, and put it up on Gumtree probably for a local sale. It's 60 pounds sterling. And uh, I think I'll probably get that much money for it. There seems to be a pretty good aftermarket on these from car valeting companies, people like that. Because they're easy to clean, you can use bags on them, but of course you don't have to. And because you don't have to, it means that some people won't. And if they don't, that works out well, because they can save on bags and just tip it into the dustbin. And if you're doing a lot of vacuuming, these are seen as being quite a robust little machine. So let's reassemble it then. So down on the floor, there's a bit of dust inside it, but it's quite a clean filter actually. I'm not sure if I'll change that. There we go, it's working. I don't think this is an original Henry handle, so I might swap that for the other one as well. In fact, it's definitely not going on there. This is the one it came with, a different chrome pole with a different head.
I think that's quite a successful repair. I'm quite happy with that. So I'll keep that black unit that I've just modified myself. And I could guess I could call this video how to remove the high-low unit on a Henry or a Henry Extra. I don't know what it was originally. And then this one over here, I'll take that unit because I know it's working fine and put it onto the red base over here and put a set of accessories with it and probably a new filter and just sell it as a working second-hand unit that's been maybe refurbished or maybe just used. I think I'll just sell it as used because that's more honest. Okay, excellent. Thanks for watching. See you later.